Hello students, this is Mustafa Ahmed Mirchawala from Mirchawala's Hub of Accountancy. Uh, today we are going to discuss the orientation of F6EX. That is ACCA paper, right? Uh, before we move on, let me share something about me. Uh, I've been teaching for last 18 to 20 years now. And I not only teach this paper F6TX, but I also teach F3, which is FA. I also teach uh, F7, which is FR, Financial Reporting, SBR, Strategic Business Reporting, and also ICW, Corporate Reporting. And also our institute, Mirchawala's Hub of Accountancy, offers all papers, all papers of ACCA, ICW, CFA, we offer all these qualifications, right? Just for your motivation, let me share you some of our results because there are many students those who scored not only nationwide but also worldwide positions are students score right so these are these are few of our recent high scores scorers of f6 and in this list there are some students who scored positions right okay now when they can produce such a good results you can also do it right now about this paper f6 tx this tx stand for taxation taxation now the papers of a, first of all, what's the average global pass rate of this paper? The average global pass rate is around 48, 49, sometimes 52. So that's why I have written 50%. 50% is the average pass rate of this paper and which is very good. You know, in applied skills module, there are some papers, they have only 38, 37, 40% pass rate. So 50% is one of the highest pass rate. Like, F6, F7, these papers have got the highest pass rate, right? That's why it is recommended. It is recommended to opt these papers first. Why it is recommended to opt these papers first? Because when you opt those papers which have the highest passing rate, so there is automatically, automatically the chances of passing, passing that paper is high. So first you should opt those papers with higher passing rate then you should go towards the paper which with low low pass, pass rate okay so in this way in this way you can get a motivation you can get a motivation now what course material will follow the course material very simple first of all mha book which is my own book right and i'll provide you this i'll pro, i'll provide you the pdf of that book you can take the print out the second is you need to buy Kaplan exam kit. Kaplan exam kit is a must thing, right? Okay. And what about the study tax? Study tax, Kaplan study tax is optional. If you want to read, you can. Otherwise, if you're running short of time, so no need. My book plus Kaplan exam kit is more than enough. More than enough. But I don't stop students from reading study tax. Yes, if you are, if you have a habit of reading study tax since the beginning, then carry on with that, that habit. No issue right? Okay. But these two are the compulsory thing. My book, M MHA means Mirchawala's Hub of Accountancy, our institute book, and the second is Kaplan exam kit. These two things are very important. Now, regarding the paper format, see, this is the paper format. Now, many of you have just come from the AFD, right? That uh, FIA route or that means there is a possibility this is your first paper. There is a there is a possibility this is your first paper of applied skills module. So let me share the paper format. You know that normally there are four windows in a year. Uh, these are session CV, not on demand CV. They are these are session CV. So only four windows in the year: March, June, September, and December attempt. March, June, September, and December attempt. Okay. And now this is the format. You will have three sections in the exam: section A, section B, section C. Section A contains 15 MCQs at the rate two marks each. So it's 30 marks. Now the question is, sir, from where these questions will come? From where these questions will come? These questions will come from any area of the syllabus, any area like CGT, IHT, corporation tax, individual tax, any area they can come, right? Okay. Now, section B, MTQs, MTQs. You will have three OT cases or you can say MTQs cases of 10 marks each. Now, what is MTQ? Hope you remember you have given the previous F3 paper or F2 paper. In F3, hope you remember, there are last, the last section is 15, 15 marks, two questions, 30 marks, 15, 15 marks, two questions. And in that you will have a detailed discussion. First of all, you will have a story or discussion and then you have five MCQs, five MCQs related to that story. So now here you will have three OT cases. 
and in each ot case you will get first of all you will have a story or discussion and then you will have five five mcqs related to that story so now just think about it there are three ot case of 10 marks each and what is one ot case in one ot case you will have five mcqs five mcqs or five blanks at the rate two marks each so automatically 10 multiplied by three this is the 30 marks weighted now the next question is sir from which area these three empty these three ot cases normally comes normally this area comes from vat this is value added tax iht which is inheritance tax and cgt chargeable gain tax capital gain tax normally these three ot cases this is the past behavior of examiner these three ot cases comes from these three areas value added tax inheritance tax and cgt capital gain tax or chargeable gain tax now the last area is section c this is constructed response area now my dear student in first 60 marks there is no presentation you just have to take there is no presentation there is no typing at all but yes la last 40 marks this last 40 marks you have to work you have to work on proper software now many students think that it is proper excel no this is not excel this is just spreadsheet this is just spreadsheet in a spreadsheet my dear students you just need you just need first of all you need typing you under you must know the typing then you need the sum you need how to apply the sum function subtract function multiplication and division if you know these things you can easily work on this last 40 marks so it's not a big thing plus in our classes in my classes i'll also i'll also show you how to do it i will also practice this thing right okay so now in the section C, there are it's 40 marks section because obviously first 60 marks, there are two sections, section A and B. So in section C, you will have three questions. The first one is 10 marks, then 15 marks, and then 15 marks. This 10 marks normally come from tax planning area. This 10 marks normally, normally, this is the practice of examiner, but yes, examiner may change it, may change it, right? It normally comes from tax planning area. Now, what is tax planning? Tax planning is a very interesting thing. For example, for example, I have to start a business. So I have one option that I start the business with my own name, like a sole trader, like a sole trader. So everything will be on my name, individual name, right? Second option, I can start the same, same business with the name of a limited company. Let us say I incorporate a limited company and I become the shareholder of that company. So now that business will run with the name of company. And now, yes, I will, I will have to apply corporation tax rules as well. Okay. One more example. Now let us say I've started the business with the name of company. I have started the business with the name of company. Now how to extract funds from that company. The first option is I may become the shareholder of that company. And now as a shareholder, I can extract funds. I can extract funds in the form of dividends. Yes, this is the first option. Second option, I become the director of that company. And yes, the directors are employees of that company. And now I can take out salary. I can take out funds from that company in the form of salary. So see, there are different options. There are different options. So we have to decide. We have to decide and we have to go for the best function. We have to decide and we have to go for the best function. We have to go for the best of the best function, right? And it's very interesting area, 10 marks. The second area in section C is corporation tax. Corporation tax about companies. If let us say a company is doing business, a company is earning trading income, a company has different properties. So companies might have earn, might be earning rental income or company has different investments in a stock exchange and other. So company may have capital gains. So you will have a complete scenario of companies of 15 marks. Okay, right? Plus you will have some area of group of companies as well. Group of companies like parent, subsidiary, fellow subsidiaries. This type of things are also may also be examined in the exam. But this is a good area. Finally, question number three, again, 15 marks, but it's about individual income. Individual income. Now think, use your brain. Individual can go for job. Yes. So if an individual is going for job, so that individual is earning employment income. 
that individual is earning employment income so in that case in that case a student you will have to pay tax on employment income so yes employment income may come employment income may come in this question yes secondly individual may start a business so if in, if individual is doing a business so in that case students he will be liable for trading income his income will be trading income so he may have to pay tax on trading income right so normally in this 15 marks you get you sometime get pure employment income question sometime you get pure trading income question and sometime you get the combination of employment plus trading income employment plus trading income right okay now student the benefit of this paper the listen me listen to me very carefully many students get the knowledge of tax from this paper and then they start working for for different firms different uk firms because you know this is the time of outsourcing this is the time of back office like for example in uk the different companies different companies have to apply you in uk obviously they have to apply uk tax all companies so different audit firms provide them services and these audit firms hire employees worldwide worldwide like from our country in pakistan there are many many of my students are giving services to uk entities in india i have many indian students as well my indian students also providing services to uk companies so after this paper you can you can you get the tax knowledge and you can apply it you can apply it you can file tax returns of for your clients or different audit firms right okay so it's advisable to start working once you do it start working and start start getting experience and start earning right okay now we are starting with in in it's my routine since last many years that in my first orientation class i start teaching i start one chapter one theoretical area now normally this is a three or four pages if you see the bpp study tax or kaplan study tax this is your first chapter and it is hardly three to four pages and normally believe me or not believe me normally students used to this was the past practice of student they used to think this is non important area this is not an important area like if you have seen f3 study tax in f3 study tax you have you seen the first chapter introduction to accounting what is accounting so normally students ignore that chapter but believe me this chapter came many times in last 10 years this chapter is very general it's about f1 you remember the bt paper bt paper your previous it's about economics and all general discussion but this thing even may come in exam and it comes in exam okay so that's why we have to give time on it but it's very easy it's all theoretical discussion now first of all you all you students you all know there are two types of taxes direct tax and indirect tax there are two types of taxes direct taxes direct tax and indirect tax direct tax and indirect tax what is direct tax direct tax is a, is a tax which is applied on incomes which is applied well, whoever will earn income he has to he has to pay he has to bear direct tax for example if you are doing job your income is employment income yes on employment income you have to pay tax this is direct tax if you are doing business your income is business income yes you have to pay tax on business income that is also direct tax if you put your money in the savings account in the fixed deposit account so you will get interest income so on that interest income you have to pay tax yes 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 that is also direct tax if you invest in a stock market so if you invest in shares you will get dividend so on dividend income you have to pay tax this is also direct tax so whatever tax is applied on income is direct tax the second is indirect tax indirect tax is is applied on consumption of goods and services consumption of goods and services and the burden of indirect tax is borne by final consumer like if you you might have heard about value added tax or sales tax so if you if you drink a pepsi or coke so for, for example the price of pepsi is $1 plus 0.5 dollars the vat so 1.5 dollars is the final price so whoever will drink the pepsi or coke he has to bear the burden right so indirect tax this is very famous even you have studied in your basic studies for indirect tax the burden is 
borne by final consumer and indirect tax is applied on goods and on consumption of goods and services right so first of all just a recap of these two taxes now the next thing why government charges taxes why government charges taxes hope you remember the fiscal policy hope you have heard about the fiscal policy you have seen in different books where money comes from and where it goes to where money comes from and where it goes to listen for government tax is the basic source of income for government tax is the major source of income major source of income tax is a major source of income okay so government earns through tax and then government spends then government spends on defense of the country education of the country listen to me construction of the country for med med medicine and for the betterment of the people of the country so these are all are the expenditures so from one side government collects taxes on the other side government on the other side on the other side on the other side government spends so now the question is why government charges taxes why government charges taxes listen there are three factors the first is economic factors second is social factors and third is environmental factors economic factors social factors and the third one is environmental factors right okay now we'll start with the economic factors we we'll, we are starting with the economic factors see this is the discussion see the first line through tax through tax government regulates many things through tax government can control inflation through tax government can control inflation now be with me be with me don't sleep hope you remember hope you have seen this disposable income disposable income is equal to income less direct taxes disposable income is equal to income less direct taxes now take a basic example for example there is a guy who is doing job and his income his gross income is 10000 and right now on this gross income on this employment income he is paying tax of 2000 right direct tax of 2000 so how much he gets at home he gets a take home pay he gets a take home pay of 8000 he gets a take home pay of 8000 now this 8000 he can spend or he can save he can spend or he can save right okay now wait for example let us say suddenly government announces that the direct taxes will be increased now government doubles the direct tax so previously this direct tax was only 2000 previously this direct tax was only 2000 now government increased this direct tax to 4000 now use your brain now the moment government increase the direct tax the moment government increase the direct tax listen here so as these direct taxes went up as these direct taxes went up the disposable income went down as these direct taxes went up the disposable income went down and when the disposable income came down or went down so for the whole public their incomes are low their incomes are now low so when their incomes are low obviously now they can spend only few on few things when the when direct taxes increases see when direct taxes increases disposable income decreases and when disposable income for the whole country decreases so obviously now they can demand less goods so overall aggregate demand of the country country will go down and whenever you know the rules of economics whenever the demands go down obviously price level will go down and once the price level will go down inflation will be in control so yes government can control inflation through tax see through tax government control the inflation so these are the economic objectives which government achieves government achieve government see through tax government can control inflation government can control inflation right now skip this first b point and come to c through tax government can regulate any market yes for example gum if government wants to increase the stock market government wants to attract investors towards the stock market so government can announce tax cuts tax cuts if government says now for the next year there is 0% tax on stock exchange so everybody will come to stock exchange see 
so through tax government can government can shoot any market and government can destroy any market as well in past we have seen in different countries sometimes government increases the tax rate for residential properties sometimes government increases the tax rate for residential properties so automatically people will run away from the residential properties so the prices will automatically go down so government can regulate prices through tax as well okay now the b point through tax, government can control supply of money. Hope you have listened this word in, in economics. Through tax, government can control supply of money. Now wait. You know, this is a very basic thing. Whenever interest rate, interest rate in any country goes down, whenever the interest rate in any country goes down, so people just run away towards money. What people do, they start taking loan. They start consumer financing. They buy homes because now the interest rate is low. The cost of borrowing is low. They start buying cars on lease and all. So automatically when interest rate goes down, people start borrowing from bank. So a lot of money, lot of money supply in the country. The money supply in the country increases and people start buying more things. So automatically the demand Aggregate demand goes up. Aggregate demand goes up because now a lot of money in the hands of people, right? Because the interest rate is going has gone down. But because a lot of money in the hands of people, so people will buy more. When people will buy more, so aggregate demand, aggregate demand of the country will go up. So the inflation may also go up. So now what government does? Government increases the interest rate. Government increases the interest rate. So now whenever government increases increases the interest rate so automatically the cost of borrowing is high so people run away from taking loans so now less money in the market less money supply in the market so automatically inflation will be controlled this is how economics work right now what i have written through tax government can control supply of money through tax government can control supply of money now listen look at here this thing I'll teach you during my course. Today is the introduction class, but I'm giving you, I'm quoting the example right now. This is, let us say, Barclays. Barclays Bank. Hope you remember, the, hope you have listened to this name. This is a bank of UK, Barclays. And this is individual saving account. Individual savings account. Listen, students. Okay. This is also in UK. If you invest your funds in Barclays, you will get interest income. If you invest your funds in Barclays, you will get interest income. But yes, on this interest income, let us say you have to pay 40 or 20% tax. If you invest in any private bank, if you invest your funds in any private banks, yes, you have to, you will get interest income. And on that interest income, you have to pay 20% or 40% or tax. 20% or 40% tax, right? Okay. But if you invest in this account, this is this account is regulated by UK government, UK government. If you invest in this account, the returns are tax free. The returns are tax free. You don't need to pay any tax on on this account investment on. If you invest in individual saving account, you will be receiving interest income and on that interest income, no tax. So just think the whole UK people will automatically get attracted towards this individual saving account. So when all the people will be attracted from towards this account, so people will invest. Listen to me. People will give the money to, to the government. So automatically, automatically the whole money of the city will come to the government. So automatically the supply of money, supply of money will be under control of government, right? So yes, government just control the supply of money through tax. Government just control the supply of money through tax. So yes, it is possible. So I have just discussed these first three points. Please students look at, look at the screen and read it. Look at the screen and read it. Be careful. Now, the fourth point through tax government can control traffic. Yes, that's that's very common. Uh, you might have seen in different countries of the world, like in Singapore, I have seen this UK. In UK, there is a very famous street, Oxford Street. Yes, 
so a lot of brands shops are there and the uk government wants to avoid people to come in car because already people walks a lot at that place so if you just drive one time on that road you will have to pay a tax like 30 pounds or 50 pounds it's too much it's too much so automatically people don't come on that street in cars they come by walk so see through tax government control traffic as well through tax government can control traffic as well now through tax government can motivate us for investments yes this is very normal <coughs> You sometimes attract foreign investors through tax. You invite them and you tell them that come, come to our country and invest and we'll give you a big tax cut. Okay. Even in our, in our course, I'll teach you this, that listen to me. Sometimes you sell your existing assets. Sometimes you sell your existing business asset. And if you take that amount to your home and enjoy with your family, government won't give you any, any relief, but yes, you sold your existing asset and you got some proceeds. And if you have reinvest, if you have reinvest those proceeds in another business asset, so you will get a big relief. This is a, this is, this is the part of our course. So just think through tax government is motivating you to reinvesting government is motivating you to reinvesting. So these all are my dear students, economic objectives. These all are my dear student economic factors i've i haven't discussed the other two yet but i've just discussed the first one which is economic factors so in short to cut the story short government government achieves government achieves many economic objective through tax through tax Now let's move to the second thing, which is social factors. You know why government charges, you know why government charges tax? Because one of the major objective of tax is re redistribution of income. Redistribution of income, redistribution of income, right? Like redistribution of income is means collecting funds from rich and spending on poor. This is the best thing, right? Redistribution. So now, Hope you have studied your previous paper, which is BT, BT or F1. In that paper, you have discussed these three tax system, progressive tax system, proportionate tax system, and regressive tax system. Now, what is progressive tax system? Progressive tax system means, means as your income increases, your tax rate also increases. As your income increases, your tax rate also increases. For example, take giving you one example. Zero to 20,000. 20,000 to 60,000 and then 60,000 and above. It's 10%, 20 and 40. So that means for first 20,000, your tax rate will be 10%. The additional income between this band, your tax rate will be 20%. And if you are earning, earning more than 60,000, so for additional income above 60,000, the tax rate is 40%. So this is an example of progressive tax system, right? What does it mean? I repeat, it means as your income increases, your tax rate also increases. As your income increases, your tax rate also increases, okay? Now, the second is proportionate tax system. Proportionate tax system means same tax rate, not same tax. It means same tax rate. For example, if you are earning 100,000, let us say there is a fixed tax rate of 10%. So 100,000 times 10%, you have to pay 10,000. But if you are earning 300,000, now again, you have to pay fixed tax rate that is 10%. 300,000 times 10% is 30,000. So tax rate remains same. Tax rate remains same. Tax rate remains same, right? Amount of tax may change, but tax rate remains same. So I repeat, the first system, the progressive tax system, so the progressive tax system means as your income increases, your tax rate also increases. As your income increases, your tax rate also increases. Proportionate tax system means same tax rate. Proportionate tax system means same, same, same tax rate, same tax rate. And what is the regressive tax system? Listen, as your income increases, your tax rate goes down. Now, this is very bad for poor people. This is very bad. So read this line 
indirect taxes are tends to be regressive in nature indirect taxes are tends to be regressive in nature now giving you one example giving you one example listen for example my income is hundred dollars my income is hundred dollars and let us say i go to a restaurant to eat food so whenever or i go to buy a pepsi just take an example i go to buy a tax pepsi so in pepsi there is a gst or value added tax of two dollars so i'm earning hundred dollars and if i buy a pepsi i have to pay two dollars now can you take out the percent it's two percent of my income that means i'm paying two percent tax as i'm earning hundred dollars and i'm drinking pepsi and there's a fixed gst there is a fixed vat of two dollars on that pepsi so on me on me it's two percent now there is a rich man he's earning one thousand dollars he's earning one thousand dollars now if this rich man goes if this rich man goes to drink the pepsi that rich man also has to pay two dollars because the gst is fixed so now he has to pay two dollars now what is the percentage it will become like 0.2 percent or something 0.2 percent or something so just see just see as the income increases see income increases from 100 to 1000 the tax rate is going down as the income is increasing the tax rate is going down so that's why indirect taxes are regressive in nature indirect taxes are tends to be regressive in nature indirect taxes are tends to be regressive regressive in nature regressive in nature right that's why in good countries they don't apply indirect taxes on necessities listen think over it because necessities are consumed by poor people as well so it's good if you are applying indirect taxes on luxuries because luxuries are used by rich people so it's better but on necessities it's it you should not company country should not apply indirect taxes because necessities are used by poor people and you can see with this example that indirect taxes are tends to be regressive in nature and what do you mean by regressive as your income increases your tax rate goes down so there are three tax systems students look at here progressive proportionate regressive progressive means as your income increases your tax rate goes down proportionate tax same tax rate regressive as your income increases your in interest your tax rate goes down okay now, there is one word which we call compliance cost. It is also written in the book, compliance cost. Compliance cost means cost in the form of formalities, time, etc. For example, listen, let us say you have to pay the tax. So what, what is the procedure? First, go to this department, take one form, get it signed with the 18th grade officer, then go to this window, then go to this, then this, this. So if there are a lot of formalities, a lot of things to do before paying tax, so people will run away from this tax system. People won't pay tax. People say, we don't have that much time for formalities. That's why now in this world, in this fast world, people are, governments are going for one window solution and government are going for online taxes, online taxes, like everything is online. You're, you can file your tax return online. You can pay tax online. Why government is introducing these things to reduce this compliance cost? Because, my dear student, this compliance cost is one of the reasons why people don't pay tax. Even they have money, even they are willing to pay tax. But when they say the compliance cost, the time-consuming things, they run away from the tax. Okay? So don't forget. See, I have written here, lesser the compliance cost, more the taxpayers are. So we were discussing three factors. The first one, why government charges tax? Why government charges tax? The first factor is economic factor. Economic reasons I have discussed. The second is social factors. In this social factor, we discussed the redistribution of income. We discussed the three types of taxes, progressive, proportionate, regressive. And now, finally, the environmental factors. Listen, through tax, government control the environment. Through tax, government can control the environment. Government can control the pollution, right? Even nowadays, very famous thing is climate change. Climate change is hitting the whole whole earth. You can see in developed as well as developing nations. Developed as, as well as developing nations. 
so all the governments are working on low emissions or zero emission cars so now just you think let us say if you buy let us say government can make a policy if you buy a car with high co2 emissions so you will have to pay a big duty a big tax and if you buy a zero emission car or if you buy an electric car that means now you are you are good for the society you are good for the environment so government may say you that don't no need to pay any duty no need to pay any tax government can waive your tax so see through tax government can control environment as well through tax government can control environment as well through tax government can control environment as well now the last topic of today's class these two words are written these two words are written on in your book and it comes it it it, it has been examined many times tax evasion and tax avoidance tax evasion and tax avoidance now what your book says tax evasion is illegal way of tax saving tax evasion is illegal way of tax saving and if you if you are caught if you are caught by tax department doing tax evasion you will be penalized or you will be punished you may be punished right what is the example example is hiding your actual income for example your your real income in this year is 10000 pounds your real income in this year is 10000 gbp 10000 pounds but you disclosed only 4000 pounds to government that means you have hidden you have hidden 6000 pounds so this is illegal this is illegal this is total this is pure tax avoidance this is pure tax avoidance sorry tax evasion and this is illegal second overstating your expenses you know a business may a businessman pays tax on profits and how profit is calculated revenue less expenses revenue less expenses so now now just think your real expenses are only 1000 your real expenses are only 1000 but you overstated your expenses and you and you reported 4000 expenses so just think when you increase your expenses your profit will go down and when your profit will go down your tax will go down so this is also illegal this is also harmful right now what is tax avoidance tax avoidance is basically legal way of tax saving legal way of tax saving means if you if somebody caught you doing tax avoidance you no know, nothing nothing will happen to you it's not bad so using example is using individual saving account for investment listen i told you if you if you invest in any private bank if you invest in uk in any private bank so you have to pay 20% or 40% tax on interest income 20% or 40% tax on interest income but if you invest in this isa what is the full form of isa individual savings account if you invest in this government account individual savings account this is tax free so yes you can save tax here you can save tax here and this is legal this is legal so i repeat my my statement tax evasion and tax avoidance both are tax saving tax techniques the first one evasion is illegal avoidance is legal if you caught doing evasion you will be punished if you caught do doing tax avoidance no punishment nothing and i have given you the examples as well i have given you the examples as well right now my dear students finally i would like to say this is your first orientation class and i am very motivated very excited to welcome you on board of for our institute and i would say study with motivation please if possible be part of this high achiever list this high achiever list and these are also normal people when they can do you can also do we also conduct we also conduct the revision days we give you normal course we will also conduct test routine test we have a proper testing department so we welcome you to avail all these facilities and take care thank you allah hafiz